the same again I'm accepted
Even when I didn't know it or I couldn't see it There was Jesus This man needs amazing kind of grace For forgiveness at a price I couldn't pay I'm not perfect so I thank God every day There was Jesus Oh, my. 
Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God 
and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Our upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, you son of man, I have appointed watchmen for the house of Israel. When you hear me say anything, you shall warn them for me. If I tell the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die, and you do not speak out to dissuade the wicked from his way, the wicked shall die for his guilt, but I will hold you responsible for his death. But if you warn the wicked, trying to turn him from his way, and he refuses to turn from his way, he shall die for his guilt, but you shall save yourself. The word of the Lord. If today you hear him 
his voice harden not your hearts everyone if today you hear his voice harden not your hearts come let us sing joyfully to the Lord let us proclaim the rock of our salvation let us come into his presence with thanksgiving let us joyfully sing songs to him if today you hear his voice pardon not your hearts come let us bow down in worship let us kneel before the Lord who made us, for He is our God, and we are the people He shepherds, the flock He guides. If today you hear His voice, pardon not your that today you would hear his voice harden not your hearts as at Meribah as in the day of Masa in the desert where your fathers tempted me they tested me though they had seen my words if today A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other commandments there may be are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no evil to the neighbor, hence, love is the fulfillment of the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. said to his disciples, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, 
then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Amen, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. During my time in the seminary, we had many buzzwords that were thrown out. Whether they were, you know, things that we talked about in formation conferences, things that our professors and our formators talked to us about, things that were discussed at the dinner table, or just stuff you hear talked about on the hallways or, you know, just wherever. We talked about a lot of things. There are a lot of different topics that maybe you wouldn't normally talk about, you know, at a bar or anything like that. One thing in particular that came up time and time again, either in an official capacity or just when we were hanging out around the hallways, was this idea, this phrase called fraternal correction. You may have heard of it, and if you're hearing it for the first time, it may sound almost like, you know, ooh, fraternal correction, that sounds harsh. But really what it is, is something that is essential to living in community, and something, as I'll get to in a moment, that's essential for us living as Christians. Fraternal correction is, as it sounds, Taking the time and putting forth and using your courage to actually bring to a brother something that they've done wrong. This happens all the time in the seminary, you know, living in a community, especially a community of 150 dudes, you get on each other's nerves all the time. And it doesn't take long before you figure out all of your brother's faults when you spend every day with them, when you eat with the same people every day, when you pray with the same people every day, when you go to class with the same people every day, their faults become very apparent very quickly, whether you try to, try to look at them or not. And so what is needed is the space to lovingly and safely and also truthfully bring another brother to realize when he's wronged someone, when he has sinned against someone, when he has sinned in general. That's the only way a healthy community grows. And it's the same for us in the church. Whether I'm speaking just generally about our interactions with our fellow parishioners here at St. Genevieve, whether it's just in the small little pockets of the community and our friends and our family, or whether it's with the church universal, we need the space and Jesus commands us even in some way to embrace this idea of fraternal correction because otherwise the church cannot be the church. And this is a problem in our day. Because in our day, in our society, even in our own hearts, we really only know two ways to deal with correction and sin. The first is to ignore it or to be, quote, tolerant to it. You have your way of living. You live your life. I live mine. I won't tell you how to live your life if you don't tell me how to live mine. This attitude that I am not my brother's keeper, like Cain. And if you remember, Cain was the one who killed his brother. I am not my brother's keeper. And so I don't have to tell you when you've done something wrong. And so you don't have to tell me when I've done something wrong. That is not love. In fact, that is how we kill and destroy our brother's souls. 
but it's how we destroy the souls of another person. When we are not brave enough, or do we do not have enough love for another person to tell them when they are sinning, to help them to grow in holiness. But there's also another extreme that is everywhere today, that is shown everywhere. And that is exemplified, it's shown forth best in this idea of the cancel culture, which we have come to know so well. Where, oh, you have done this wrong, you have sinned in this way, you've done this thing that's terrible, let me tell the whole world about it so we can humiliate you. Let me tell the whole world about it through social media, through Facebook, Instagram, Discord, whatever social media outlet you choose, so that everyone can know how terrible of a person you are. And that, as we obviously see, is not love either. That is not truly correcting a brother. That is not seeking out their holiness. That's seeking their ruin, their destruction, their humiliation, and ultimately, their death the death of their body, and the death of their soul. That is not love. What Jesus calls us to is the fraternal correction that he outlines for us. The way that we come to our brother or our sister one-on-one, -on -one, we seek them out in a relationship, a relationship that is both physical that we see them face to face, we speak to them face to face, and we are able to bring to them our concerns. We are able to show them with our bodies and our words, I want you to be holy, and so this I need to tell you. That is what he tells us to do in that first sentence where he says, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If we are not willing and courageous enough to do that first encounter, to go to the one who has sinned against us face to face, alone, one on one, then where's the love? And I know that can be hard, that is frightening, because we can't control another person when we're speaking to them face to face. We can't control how someone else will react. But that is the only way that goodness and truth will out. That is the only way that God's will is done in that relationship, that face-to-face -face relationship. But then he continues. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you. One or two others who are also concerned for that person's holiness like you are, that are concerned that this person is straying from God, that are concerned and want this person to be holy. Take those one or two others with you so that there is a greater testimony, there is a greater witness, there is a greater desire for holiness. And if that is not enough, if he still does not listen, Jesus says, tell the church. And this does not mean that we post about someone's sins on the parish bulletin. It means that we seek out the wisdom of the church, of the assembly, of the people of God, and especially of the church's wisdom. We seek out ways that we can help to bolster our claim, to bolster our desire for their holiness, to bring them to them. Maybe even bring in the wisdom of someone we trust who is, has authority, who has wisdom within the church. To bring that in to help us to show that person, I want you to be holy. This is what we believe about this. I want you to be holy. I don't want you to be in opposition to this. And even if that fails, what does Jesus tell us to do? If he refuses to listen even to the church, treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. And how does Jesus treat the Gentiles 
and the tax collectors. He reaches out continuously in mercy. Think of Matthew. Matthew, the tax collector, who was, ex was doing terrible things. He reaches out to him and says, come. What if Matthew had not listened the first time when Jesus had stopped? We are called, if our brother or our sister refuses to listen, refuses to convert, we are not called to desert them, but to continue to reach out, and especially to pray. How does Jesus end this passage? By calling us to prayer, by reminding us of the power of prayer, and especially when the assembly is gathered. As he says, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. And where the place where this is most perfectly represented is here. That is why at every Mass we have the prayers of the faithful, because we are called to present in our hearts all of those who have sinned against us and even those whom we have sinned against, to bring them to this altar, to pray for them, so that the witness of the two or three that are gathered here, the prayer of the two or three gathered here in Christ's name, to offer that prayer that he offered on the cross. That that prayer can be heard for those who have sinned against us. For those whom we have sinned against. That is why we pray those prayers of the faithful at every Mass. That is why in the prayer, the Eucharistic prayer that we pray at every Mass, we pray for the world. In that same prayer where the body and blood are made present, we pray for the world. Which includes all of us and those whom we pray for. We are meant to pray for our brothers and sisters who sin against us. At every Mass, that is what we bring. And so as we gather and we continue this prayer, this great prayer that is the Mass, call to mind those whom you may have trouble with, whom you have sinned against, whom has sinned against you, whom you may have reached out for and they have refused to listen. Bring them to the altar. Bring them to the cross that is present here in this Mass so that Christ can hear us and can offer his grace to them. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, one God made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. By his grace, Christ has gathered us in his name. Our prayer will be granted by our Father in heaven, for we know that Jesus is here in our midst. That the members of the Universal Church may walk together in unity, let us pray to the Lord. 
that leaders of nations may respect human rights and reject repression and torture, let us pray to the Lord. That people whose actions separate them from the church may be reconciled, let us pray to the Lord. That we may be just and loving as we live out the commandments of God in this community, let us pray to the Lord. For all those affected by Hurricane Laura and recent storms, and that through the intercession of Our Lady of Prop Sucker, we will be spared all loss of life and property during this hurricane season. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. That the dead may be cleansed and prepared for eternal unity with Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord God, our Father, grant the prayers of your people. We join them to the intercession of Jesus in our midst, our brother, priest, and king, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Will you come and follow me if I would call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? Will you leave yourself behind? If I would call your name Will you care for cruel and kind And never be the same Will you risk the hostile stare Should your life attract or scare Will you let me answer prayer the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son. Yes. Bless the 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Shelton, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious, ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the, bo the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the, this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of our high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel 
to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, Formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
For those joining us on social media, please pray with me in active spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
your faithful Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. And I'd like to invite Miss Shelby Ellis to come up and speak for a little bit. Good morning, y'all. Um, I am Shelby Ellis. I've been a parishioner here for 20 years, and uh, you guys may know my mom, Miss Scarlett. She works in the office. Um, I'm here today to talk to you guys about uh, the mission that I'll be joining this year. I was just hired as a full-time missionary with Vagabond Missions, um, and Vagabond's ministry vision is firstly outreach, um, reaching out to inner-city teens in Wichita, Kansas, and other locations in the country 
reaching out to those kids and um, just giving them a safe environment, uh, giving them an adult that they can trust. So many of them um, just don't have great influences in their life um, and also not very safe home environments. So we reach out to them, offer them friendship, and um, we also are a Catholic mission. So we invite them to prayer, mass, Bible studies, um, and other opportunities for them to come hang out, um, have some food and fun. And uh, this year, I'm going to be a full-time missionary, like I said, in Wichita, Kansas. And I'll be on a team whose goal is to reach those teens, um, you know, and draw them into a relationship with Christ. Uh, and I'd appreciate any and all prayers for myself as a missionary and for the teens in Wichita. And I'd love to invite anyone who's interested in doing more to help the mission as myself, um, as a missionary, or for the kids to contact me. You can call, text, or email me, um, and I'll have some brochures after Mass that have my contact info. Um, I'd love to speak with you and discuss ways that you can support me this year. Um, for more information, you can check the St. Genevieve website or the Facebook page. Um, and I'll be on the back. I'll be in the back with some brochures, and my mom will be out the side door as well. So um, just let us know if you like one. Um, I'd love to have y'all on my support team. Have a great weekend. Thank you very much, Shelby. And just a couple more kind of announcements before we conclude this Holy Mass. First, just as a general reminder, as we've been doing, just leave your kneelers down as you leave the church. That will help us tremendously in our usual sanitation of the pews after Mass. Finally, um, just a reminder, as we did last week, we're still doing a special collection this weekend. We're joining our diocese and supporting those who have suffered, who are victims of the recent Hurricane Laura, especially, you know, in the Lake Charles area. So we have an opportunity for you to give still this weekend. There are the two special collection boxes, one at the back entrance of the church and one at the side entrance. Uh, please invite you to be generous, and we thank you ahead of time for your generosity and your support of those who are suffering still at this time as a result of Hurricane Laura. So please be generous, and God bless you in that generosity. And that's all we have for you this weekend. May we have a blessed and happy Labor Day weekend to you all. Please stand. Oh, sorry. One was to those of you who are joining us on social media, you can also join us in participating in this special collection by clicking the link on the Facebook uh, post of this video, of this live stream, and go to the Diocesan Hurricane Relief website, which is posted on our Facebook page as well. So if you want to participate, you can do that. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that all unity may one day be restored. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know. Christians by